let's build a tree class to represent trees. In particular, we'll represent trees that have an entry at the root and a list of branches. There could be any number of branches. When a tree has zero branches, we call it a leaf. Okay, we'll start a class called tree. We'll define a constructor that takes an entry and some branches. We set an instance attribute called entry to whatever entry was passed in. We'll also check to make sure that each branch is a tree because that's the recursive structure of a tree. Each branch must be a tree itself. Here we use the built-in isInstance function which returns true if branch is either a tree or some other class that inherits from tree. Finally, we set an instance attribute called branches to a list of the branches. And that's really all we have to do. To start using this class, we can, for instance, define fibtree, which constructs a Fibonacci tree for Fibonacci number n. So if n is 0 or 1, that is just the leaf which contains n. Otherwise, we need to recursively compute the left and right fib tree and then add their entries together to get the entry at the root and the branches are just left and right. Let's try it out. Okay, class tree def init the entry and the branches which by default are empty. We set the entry. For every branch and branches, we check that branch is an instance of tree. And we set self.branches to a list of the branches. This way we make sure the branches are always a list as opposed to a tuple or something. If we want to make this a little bit nicer, we can define a wrapper string, just as we did before for the linked list, which will check if there are branches. If so, then we can build a branches wrapper, which is a comma followed by a wrapper string for all the branches. Otherwise, there are no branches, so we can leave out that part entirely and return a tree starting with the entry and followed by the branches wrapper. Let's see what we've built so far. I can create a tree and I can create a tree which has exactly one branch in it. Excellent. Now on to our fib tree definition. If n is 0 or n is 1, we will return a tree just containing n. Otherwise, we'll have two branches, a left tree, a right tree, and then we finally return the whole fib tree, which has an entry that we can compute by adding together the left and right entry, and then passing in as the branches a list of left and right. So if I construct a fib tree for Fibonacci number 5, then I get this large structure. And if I create one for number 20, it took a little bit of time to run, and for 30, it takes a long time to run, because we're constructing so many different trees. So, how can we solve this problem? Well, exactly how we solved it before. We can memoize fibtree, at which point, if I create fibtree30, it's constructed immediately. It would still take a long time to print out because there's so much to it. But the reason it's constructed so quickly, even though it has a very large entry at the top, is that the branches are repeated using exactly the same tree whenever there are exactly the same contents. So it should be the case that if I get the 30s 
branch 0, that's uh, 28. If I get 30s branch 1s branch 1, that's also 28. So it should be that this is that, meaning it's the same object repeat. And that's true. So by memoization, I was able to reuse whole structures in addition to just numbers like we were doing before.